This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, we are back. I'm the Prince of Investment. This is the Prince of Investment coming to you live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, via Honolulu, Hawaii. Now, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, and share button if you're catching this live out of Hawaii. But if you're not, if you're catching the playback, whether it's YouTube, the podcast, uh, whatever it may be, check out the description box, follow the show. Catch me each and every other week here on Think Tech Hawaii every other Friday at 3 p.m. Hawaii time and uh, all of the good stuff. But as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely, you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So today's video, as you can see in the description box, we're going to be talking about how Apple stock sent shockwaves throughout the market. Some blame down Apple stock from uh, 9% to seeing the market just take a downturn to you see these crazy volatilities. So we're going to talk about how did that happen? Why did that happen? What does that mean for stocks? What does that mean for the stock market? So this is going to be a great episode, great information, talking about leading indicators, lagging indicators. So sit back, grab your investor show cup, and let's get to it. So the first thing, what is leading indicators? Remember, if you are new to the show, you probably haven't heard me speak about leading indicator versus lagging indicators. Leading indicators are things that happen before things happen. Let me make sense of that. So this pretty much tells you where a stock is going, where the market is going, and things like that. So for prime example, let's say in real life, um, I know I have the craziest metaphors, but I jump from Apple stock to my metaphors. But it's like saying, hey, if a person does this, this is what's most likely to happen next. Hey, he has a bad diet. By having a bad diet, it may lead to X, Y, Z. This is called leading indicators. These are what lead to other things. I don't know if that's a good example, but hopefully that kind of makes sense. But uh, that's what a leading indicator is. How is stock market? Why is that important? Leading indicators uh, will tell you what is going to happen to a company, a security, or whatever it is maybe happening next. For prime example, for a company, if I want to tell how well a company is doing, I can tell how... Uh, what are their factory orders? For prime example, if I own the factory, right, and I look at my order sheet come in, I look at how much a uh, company is ordering, that means if they're boosting up inventory, that means that they are projecting to sell. So I can look at a company's inventory. If they're keeping a very, very low inventory or something, that means they're not. It's, the demand is not too high. They're not projecting to sell. And if they're not projecting to sell, that can hurt profits. And if it hurts profits, that can hurt revenue. If it hurts revenue, it's going to hurt the price of the potential stock. Because what makes the stock go up and down? Not because of its current value. But if you look at the books, you can see Ford um, may have more money or have more revenue than a Tesla. But it's not off of what's going on currently. It's what's projected out in the future or what that company is projected to be. Now, for example, every quarter... Now, well, before I jump into every quarter, so you guys kind of see how a leading indicator is very important, important because it's going to tell us what has the potential to happen, right? It's like getting that warning light on your car, you know, the oil light comes on or the check engine light comes on. That's a leading indicator that something is wrong under the hood. And if you don't take care of the, the car can break down. That's a good example of a leading indicator. So that's why that's important. That's going to be very important on this episode and how Apple sent stock shockwaves throughout the entire market. So this is what happens. Every quarter, a company releases its earnings statements. It's quarterly earnings. Pretty much when you buy a stock, you are an investor. Just like uh, you own a home, you may be a part of a homeowners association. Or you may be part of a club. You pay fees to a club. A club has a, a meeting. The meeting tells you what the club has done or what the stock has done and what it's planning on doing in the future. So when uh, Tim Cook, they released their first quarter earnings for January 2018, 2019. Happy New Year, by the way, first show, for 2019. They gave out some guidance. You know, they had to tell what's going on with the company, what happened, and they had to project for next quarter, next year, 
or whatever the case may be, may be. One of the things that they cited was weak sales coming from China. They said, hey, uh, the economy is doing weak in China, right? Uh, when the economy is doing weak in China, when people don't have jobs, they don't do what? They don't buy. And if people don't buy, that hurts companies' uh, profits. If it hurts companies' profits, it hurts companies' revenue. If companies' revenue is slow, its stock price drops. So it issued out saying, hey, you know, due to China, you know, that's a major market force. We're seeing slow uh, sales of uh, phones. Not that the actual phones has sales has slowed. For that quarter, it was saying, look at our factory orders. See there? Leading indicator. They had slow factory orders from China, right? So when you have slow factory orders, wow, what caused that decline? Because of a weak economy in China. That's what Tim Cook cited, which is the Apple CEO, of being uh, looking out into the future. We see potentially slow uh, sales. We have potentially slow inventory uh, factory orders coming from China, so, you know, this could be a sign of things to come out, you know, slowing our revenue in the future, hurt the stock in the future. This would have let the uh, uh, shareholders know. Now, Prince, good. How does that affect the whole market? What does Apple have to do with the first mark, uh, the whole market? Excuse me, I had to get a little sip of water. My mouth gets dry a lot up here in Denver. But the thing about it is, now you have to open up the question of this says what drives the market, fear and greed. When someone says this, what does this cause? Or what does this cause? Fear. People start to get scared. Whoa, slow sales. Slow sales come out. Hey, Apple could be having some issues going in the future. And why is Apple so important? What happened to, what, did, what record did Apple break in 2018 in August? They broke the first trillion-dollar company market value, right? The first trillion-dollar company market value. So this is a huge deal. This is the first trillion-dollar market value company ever in the history of the United States, right? So this is our first trillion-dollar company, and it's talking about it's having slow sales coming out of China. China has a weak economy. The first thing people start to say is, well, who are, who is, who are Apple's suppliers? For prime example, who are the people that rely upon Apple? If Apple has slow sales, it starts to decline. It's a domino effect. Who are the suppliers? So guess what? If I'm a big, if I'm the person who makes the battery for Apple, you know, just for uh, simplistic purposes, and they sell less phones, that means that I'm going to make less batteries. That means that my company is affected. So you're doing that with people that make the battery, maybe the cell parts, maybe whatever the case they may be making, right? And whatever they are making, they are uh, all these companies are affected. Then they say, well, if Apple is cited of having slow sales in China, who else relies on the sales out of China? So any company, if there are a lot of companies in America that are required, not required, but that are relied upon sales out of China. Now, so that means that everybody is scared. Wow, you know, your cell battery, they rely on sales out of China. This company relies on sales out of China. So that means that everybody's profits are going to be slowing. So that causes feed, uh, fear that causes people to start to sell, which results into a shockwave. Not only just because of Apple, but now you have to cope with what's going on around the world. What is uh, President Trump administration has been saying lately? What have been the big thing you probably heard me speak about in the past? Tears, tears, tears. Trade war, trade war, trade war. In the trade war, the biggest, our biggest competitor was who? China, right? We was going tick for tat, tick for tat, back and forth. So um, America says, hey, we're going to impose a tax on anything that you bring into our borders. And they said, wait, we're going to attack them. Uh, a, a tax on you, going tick for tack, right? So now we're already in a trade war. We already have these tariffs going on. Then here comes China. Now here comes China, but here comes Apple saying they're experiencing slow sales out of China. Oh, my goodness. Things are starting to get very scary. You know, also what happened in October? I like to call it red October. The, uh, 2018, the stock market was performing nice, you know, going on, making a nice run. October comes around. 
Woo, wipes away the fourth quarter of the year, wipes away all the profits from 2018. So everything is already fearful anyway when you look at 2018. Create all this volatility coming into the market in 2018, at the end of 2018. Now you cope that on top of the trade wars that were going on with China. Then you have the largest company in America, first trillion dollar company in August of 2018, saying they're experiencing, they're projecting slow sales to come out of China. Now people look at the tears, it created a fear throughout the market. This fear created Apple to drop 9%. Uh, they, they announced this information Wednesday afternoon on, uh, I think that was January 3rd, if I'm not mistaken. Don't shoot me if I got it wrong. After the market had closed. When they did this, this sent shockwaves throughout Asia markets, which have been a different time zone. They market started to decline. Because, hey, well, Apple said they have slow sales. Everybody's relied upon sales, right? Sales, people don't like salesmen, but salesmen will drive companies. Companies need to sell something in order to have some type of revenue. So what ended up happening was uh, what ended up happening with this situation was uh, with China going out and uh, you know creating these uh, shark waves throughout the market. It caused the next day when the market opened up on Thursday for Apple. The stock dropped from $157 down to $144, wiping away $67 billion worth of market capitalization. Market capitalization goes with how many shares and how many outstanding, how many shares plus times how many uh, the price of the stock. So when the, the price of the stock drops, so does market capitalization. So it went from being this big trillion dollar company to a little bit up under six hundred and eighty million, right? And Google was able to become uh take its place. So now when you have this, this is the first time you've seen a slow in order since twenty fourteen. First time they ever seen a slow come in twenty fourteen, and this is the first time the CEO said this during a conference call since two thousand seven. Right? So when you see this, this calls the Dow Jones dropped. You see the S&P 500 dropped 2%. The NASDAQ dropped over 2%. And the Dow Jones, all the major United States indexes dropped 2%, right? So also when you heard the uh, the Trump administration come on national television and blatantly say, hey, guess what? We are, um, you know, um, this is not the only company that's going to see a decline in sales. This is what the Trump administration said. You know, we have, so they're in a trade war. You know, they're trying to renegotiate trade because America, we spend more than we make. I mean, we export, we import more things than we export. That's called a deficit. It's like spending more money than you make. You're operating on a deficit, right? So now you got to cope this. Let's add in the Fed. Throw the Fed into the picture. What does the Fed do? Their job is the federal government's interest rates. So now they're talking about, uh, the interest rates, we've been in an interest rate society where the interest rates have slowly climbed. They just raised the interest rates, I think, 2.25 in December. As interest rates go up, that means that money becomes uh, harder to borrow. It becomes more expensive to borrow. On top of that, the dollar is pretty strong. When the dollar is strong, that's good for us. That's good for when uh, anybody here in America, if we go to China to buy something with a strong dollar, that's good for us. But if you live in China and you're trying to buy things from America, not so good. So the strong dollar is also a, a downside to your economy because that's slow sales, if that makes sense, right? Um, so all these things come together. All these things, the working parts of the economy come together. You have the Fed in one end. You have the U.S. dollar in one end. You have interest rates. You have projected sales. You have tariffs. You have politics all wrapped into a nice big bubble. And this is what caused shockwaves throughout the whole stock market um, on yesterday. Now, today, on Friday, the uh, 5th, if I'm not mistaken, the market had a great rebound due to a strong jobs report. So due to this very strong jobs report, the market rebounded 700-something points. Apple regained 4% of its value, market value. Um, so even nothing financially has happened to the company. They just projected out what was going to happen. They created shockwaves. So now 
we ended up with very strong, which is a lot of volatility going up and down, up and down. But we ended up, at the end of the day, we finished the week very strong. So that's how it happened. So people were sitting back looking at it and saying, wow, Apple shares are down. The market is all red, you know, tariffs and interest rates and da, da, da. But it can start with one little company with the CEO of a major, major, major company saying, hey, I'm seeing a slow sales or whatnot. Then you start to look at all the companies that are affiliated with that. Well, who rely on Apple for their profits? You know, it would be for a prime example, if I don't, if I lost my job, I can't afford to pay rent. If I can't afford to pay rent or if I can't afford my mortgage, that means the bank don't get their money, right? If the banks don't get their money, that causes a financial situation for them. The domino effect goes on and on and on. So that's why it's very key when someone sees something and looking at other things. Those are leading indicators, right? The lagging indicators, the lagging indicators are things that are like side effects of what happens. Is the strong dollar is a lagging indicator. The interest rates are lagging indicators, right? They can, the interest rate can be used as a leading indicator, too, because they can tell you what it's about to come, but there's no guarantee. So those are the things you need to look at that we just talked about. Uh, this hadn't happened. The CEO had came out of Apple since 2000. I'm just doing a recap. The leading indicator of U.S. factory data which led Tim Cook to speak about this. Uh, you know, Google overtakes Apple in market capitalization. Um, they did a forecast. They downgraded themselves. Uh, this is the slowest order since 2014. We got the tariffs in the place. Also, the strong job reports. And also, the um, not only are the strong job reports, also the strong job reports and the um, China and uh, China and the United States are supposed to sit down and talk about their tariffs on Monday, which I think will be a very volatile day. And volatile meaning that the stock market will run up and down. Prince, how can I profit from this? Uh, you can profit from this short term. It's looking for volatility. VIX, the VIX index, which measures volatility. You can increase volatility in the market because depending on how that trade talk is interpreted, it, could be, it can cause the market to go up or down, anything like that. So that's one. Two, you're going to be talking about the uh, um, second thing is you're looking at a company like Apple, which as of yet, financially, nothing has happened. They just put out a downgrade in their forecast. This could be a great sale, right? This could be a great sale. We'll see them, the stock drop off 9%. If the stock just returned back to where it was, you earn 9% automatically. Plus, it pays dividends. Plus, it's a strong financial company. But um, you can look at taking advantage of a sale, looking at getting earning some, uh, buying some Apple stock. But on the downside, you could, uh, you know, the forecast could be true because it's something that uh, Jeff Bezos. I leave with this. Something that Jeff Bezos said. He said, "Hey, one day Amazon will go bankrupt and you know disappear." He said, "Big, large companies last for about 30 years. They don't last for hundreds of years. So when you're a big company, nobody. It's Amazon is saying they're not too big to fail." Who else should say that, right? So, you know, you just that's what people are looking at. But that's always a risk. But anyway, that is my time. That's today's episode about uh, how Apple stock causes a shockwave throughout the market, a uh, very current thing that's going on, and what's caused the rebound, what caused – we talked about what caused that big drop, how it affected the stock market, ways that you can um, take advantage of it, and how econ how the economical machine ties into play with interest rates, the strong dollar, um, leading indicators, what does factory data mean, why do people pay attention to it, and how does that affect your money. But as, as always, until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.